Before I even get into this, I have to give a shout out to two people, Professor Black Truth and Harvey over at Yo World, because they both did videos talking about Goldie Taylor. Now, Goldie Taylor is a person I have never talked about on my channel until today. I don't think her name has even come up, even in other commentaries, even if it wasn't about her. But she this is her first this is her introduction to my channel, and what a way to get introduced to my channel than in a Blackaren video. So why is she getting the Blackaren examination today, you ask? Well, if you watch Harvey and Professor Black Truth's video, you would know, but in case you missed out, this woman wrote a hit piece on Rolling Stone on November 6, 2022, in which it's titled Kanye, Kyrie, and Me. But according to Professor Black Truth, and he pulled up the receipts, it was Kanye, Kanye, Kanye Kyrie, and Black Boys. And basically, it's a hit piece against black males, both boys, teenagers, you know, adults, whatever, in response to what has been going on recently with the whole anti-Semitism thing. And basically saying in so many words that, well, let me put it this way, pushing the trope of the big black boogeyman. Let me and leave it right there. So, yes, you have this black identified woman and I say black identified because I think there's something else going on with her. But as far as I know, she identifies herself as black who wrote this hit piece. Therefore, she is more than deserving for this entry. So I'm going to go ahead and read this hit piece because I, I refuse to call it an article coming from Rolling Stone. It says Ronnie Lee refused to eat pork swine. He said he was unclean. My oldest cousin was never partially religious. In fact, the only time I ever recall Ronnie Lee in the pews of a church was for various family funerals and weddings, where he often came dressed to the nines with high shine Stacey Adams and silk brim fedora hat festooned with a peacock feather like he was headed to a players club ball. Once, days after somebody plastered his backside with a hail of buckshots and a botched robbery, he came hobbling into Auntie Gerald's house looking for a hot plate and a warm bed we never knew who was actually the victim as ronnie lee was sometimes the one doing the robbing between the women drugs and stints in prison he managed to sire 11 or 12 children by last count now listen to how she starts this off she's talking about her own family now a woman that would throw um, the men un of her family under the bus she has no problem of doing it with other men who were not related to her Undereducated and prone to conspiracy theories, when he had a bit of liquor in him, he'd rail about stage moon landings in the scat in the scourge of Reagan era trickled down economics from the front porch. He was right about Reagan, but he thought Jewish people controlled everything from the World Bank to the e great Ethiopian famine. For him, Jew was a verb most often used to describe negotiating a price, cheating a customer or high interest predatory loans. They got too much power, he'd say. We lost the tribes of Israel. Through the years, he was so drunk so often that a judge in Georgia made him turn over the license place to his truck. His mama, my auntie, loved him bone deep, even if she thought his worldview was poppycock. Get on, away from here with that noise, Ronnie Lee, she said. Ronnie Lee was just that crazy uncle that needed to be suffered, if not pitied. After refusing woo it, the woo it thing, he passed on a few years ago with his children at his side. But the deeply rooted anti-Semitism he harbored throughout his adult lives, life lives on. In recent days, as the Brooklyn Nets suspended him and Nike severed ties with NBA star Kyrie Irving, I wonder if I might need to throw out the brand new pair of high tops I brought for my granddaughter. I couldn't shake how the Australian born first overall draft picks pro closely resembled Ronnie Lee's. Then there is Kanye West, a self-professed free-thinking genius. The artist now known as Ye has compared himself in the financial shellacking he is enduring to George Floyd and Emmett Till. After apologizing for attributing Floyd's death to fentanyl, West said he knew what it was like to have somebody's foot on his neck. In an Instagram post, he called his widespread condemnation and fall from grace a digital lynching and likened it to bankrupting his social, social credit score. The chart-topping rapper, producer, fashion designer, and now former billionaire included a picture of a grossly disfigured Till, a 14-year-old who was lynched in 1955 in his casket. Twitter has was alight with disgust. I was struck, though, by the notion that some posters believe this brand of anti-Semitism among black people is somehow something new and rare. 
I can tell you without pause or question that it is not. Now, keep in mind, I just did a video about that David Marcus guy. I think that's his name, David Mar something where he says some the same thing she's just saying right now, just in that part that I just read. It literally sounds eerily similar. He did his little op-ed hit piece too, but it was on Newsweek and hers is on Rolling Stone. And that was a PC man writing that. And now you have this great value, whatever, writing this. Far from where such bigotry and echoes of black Hebrew Israelite anti-Semitism was and still are commonplace in many quarters. However, just as prominent is the cavalcade of voices from black people willing to shout them down. But that is rising again from the lips of celebrities and across social networks like TikTok is both maddening and dangerous. I don't have to wander very far to find another Ronnie Lee. A few minutes of doom scrolling will inevitably turn up another Kanye fan who believe he is being punished for telling the truth and wonders where the outrage was when he was calling slavery a choice. What they miss is the well-documented story history of allyship between black and Jewish people. Here she goes. Our struggle was theirs and theirs was ours. Notice the pause I just gave, right? You see, there were two Jewish boys, Andrew Goodman and Michael Schwern Schwerner, in a car with James Cheney the day he was abducted and murdered in Philadelphia, Mississippi. They had come south from New York in 1964 during Freedom Summer to help register black people to vote. They not only bled and died for the cause of human rights, ultimately, American Jews played a significant role in both founding and funding some of the most critical civil and human rights organizations, NAACP, Southern Christian Leadership Council, and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee among them. As far back as the 19th century, Jewish storekeepers were virtually the only Southern merchants who addressed black customer as Ms. Mr. and Mrs. and permitted them to try on clothing, wrote Howard Sachar, author and professor of modern history at George Washington University. So you see what she's doing right now. She's making a claim for them and saying that uh, black people, specifically black boys or black men, should not be so hard on them because look at all the stuff they helped us with. You know, why be so mean to them? They're only trying to be your friend. That's basically what I'm getting out of this. And how dare you, and also that old phrase of don't bite the hand that feeds you. In 1954, the work of Dr. Kenneth Clark, a black sociologist, which demonstrated the impact of segregation on black children, was presented on black, I'm sorry, was presented to the Supreme Court in the landmark Brown versus Board of Education case was commissioned by the American Jewish Committee. Philanthropist Julius Rosenwald, in partnership with Booker T. Washington, helped establish more than 5,000 schools for black children and contributed funds to around 20 historically black colleges and universities or HBCUs. Rosenwald wanted to see generations of free thinkers, young men and women who could chart our destinies and grow wealth for centuries to get there. He knew access to a worthwhile education was critical. The Rosenwald Washington model has continued through the decades as black and Jewish leaders link arms to fight for social justice. The black Jewish Alliance of the Anti-Defamation League in Philadelphia was formed to fight racism and anti-Semitism in 2017. Atlanta's black Jewish coalition came together in 1982 to campaign for the renewal of the Voting Rights Act. Did anybody know that there was a black Jewish Alliance of the Anti-Defamation League? Because I definitely didn't know that existed. Put a one in the chat if you knew this. Put a two if you didn't. In the 1960s, the rise of black nationalism stoked the flames of anti-Semitism in black communities. They did it from inside out. In addition to its empowering messages of self-sufficiency, black nationalism broke with nonviolent King Kingian Kingian the theologies and attempted to, to shred the social compact between black and Jewish people. For the separatists, their own influence was partially depended upon the ability to shutter the relationship to push Jewish people out of black spaces and reject those organizations that welcomed them. It sounds like she's throwing shots at the Black Panther Party. That's what it sounds like she's throwing shots at. History was never Ronnie Lee's strong suit, and I'm certain that he's never heard of Rosenwald and wouldn't know Huey Newton or Stokely Carmichael if those rose from the dead and danced down MLK Drive. And arguably, Kanye and Kyrie suffer the same dilemma, so now she's diagnosing them. They are in many ways cleaved to bastardized theological rantings of Minister Louis Farrakhan, which presumably Ronnie Lee picked up while serving out a sentence for armed robbery 
in the Illinois State Penitentiary in the early 1970s. Farrakhan, perhaps the most prominent black anti-Semite in the modern era, according to the ADL, frequently denies that Jews have a legitimate claim to their religion into the land of Israel, claiming that Judaism is nothing more than a deceptive lie and a theological error promoted by Jews to further their control over America's economy and foreign and domestic policy. That Kanye and was raised in Chicago, a short distance from the Nation of Islam's world headquarters, should be lost on no one. NOI was formed in Detroit before relocating to Chicago and took hold throughout the Midwest before spreading to places like Oakland, New York, and Baltimore. A young Kanye growing up on the Chicago South Side, a 15-minute drive down South Shore, drive from NOI leader Elijah Muhammad's house, would have had a front row seat. Five hours away downstate in East St. Louis, black separatism reached our dinner tables, too. I grew up hearing about white devils in the stolen land. Holy land don't belong to a white Arab or a white Jew. You are settlers on our land, Farrakhan said in a 2000 interview with the Chicago radio station. We are the original owners of that part of the earth, and you all kicked us out and presumed, assumed our position. But now God has come, and we are coming to reclaim what belongs to us. However, one need not live in the Midwest to be infected by its poison and vile. Those teachings have been swirling through our streets across the country, word of mouth for 50 odd years and counting. Irving, who is unsurprisingly also a flat earther, tweeted a link last Thursday to the film Hebrews to Negroes Wake Up Black America, which accuses Jews of Satan worship and plotting world domination for that West called him a real one. Well, from people that I've heard that saw the, that movie, um, I didn't hear that from those who saw it. So I'm trying to figure out where is this coming from? I have no clue where she's getting this information from. Something tells me she didn't watch this either. Ironically, our own ancestors, Ronnie Lee and mine, happen to also be of Jewish descent. Mary Helfner, his father, Albert, and Aunt Josie's paternal grandmother was a Jewish woman from Henrico, Arkansas. And my family's father's family sprang from Judah, Solomon, and Jenny Levi, who were Hungarian Jews. But the ties that bind us should not be blood alone. After all, the very first anti-immigration laws this nation ever passed was based on xenophobic backlash against Jewish people fleeing Nazi Germany and other parts of Europe. A good me immigrated to St. Louis where we lived. The so-called great, Re great replacement theory, the white nationalist trope espoused by Tiki, tiki Torch waving miscreants in Charlottesville, Virginia, has been used to justify the murder, plunder, and maiming of both Jewish and black people. We cannot allow ourselves to be manipulated into eviscerating that solidarity by prison-baked theologies or be the handmaids of white supremacy. Our job is to continue calling it out and shouting it down, no matter who traffics in the filth of anti-Semitism. No matter what gifts they may have to entertain us with, we cannot let up. We cannot be mesmerized by the Cleag lights, the roaring fans in the bleachers, or the latest bop to hit the radio. While Farrakhan himself doesn't command the multitudes he once did unfortunately his message surely does what makes kanye and Kyrie so dangerous keep that word that like, keep those words in mind what makes kanye and Kyrie so dangerous and malignant is that there are thousands of young black boys who see them and see their success and wealth and believe them we cannot allow this to fester for another 50 years we cannot let our children think this is okay you have to make it hard for hatred to get out of bed in the morning and find another way to the bank now the way this was written by her you would swear that this woman was straight a straight up pc woman up and down member of the j community like there was no black in her at all look like really pay attention and listen to what she was saying and how she was saying it this woman spoke like she had an immense amount of self-hatred in her heart or that was just seething through her entire body. Like I said, a immense amount of self-hate. That last paragraph really told it. All. I mean, everything that she wrote pretty much told it all. But that last paragraph in particular saying that Kanye and Kyrie are dangerous, you know, they're going to affect infect young black boys we can't let this continue and she literally was holding the water for that community i would like to know her take on all the atrocities that fallen on um before black people specifically black men if you watch professor black truth's video his moment of truth about this he kind of went in on it on a couple of examples where she was throwing shots at black men in the past so we know what type of time she's on and that is exactly why Goldie Taylor, as an introduction on my channel, as a focal point, also got introduced into the Blackheron Hall of Shame. 
she want to talk about dangerous her entire rhetoric that she just wrote in this whole hit piece which again was once called kanye kyrie and black boys that's what makes her dangerous